Welcome back to our studio, and we're ready to welcome our next speaker, Oldan Tefan, Senior Business Development Manager at Ad Colony. Hello. Hello, Oldan. Can you hear Hi. me? Hi. Hi. Yes, yes, I can hear you. Oh, beautiful. Every, How are you today? Everything okay? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Oh, very well. Thank you very much. Very excited about the, uh, the ongoing show, about the speakers joining us, about yourself being here. So, yeah, that's actually a wonderful day for me. Thank you very much. That's great. So, where are you located? But, if it's not a secret, physically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I live in Istanbul, Turkey, actually. Oh, nice! I've heard so many yeah. great things about it, but never got a chance to go there yet. Uh, but hopefully, yeah, I, yeah, hopefully, I totally hopefully. recommend. It's it's a great city. Thank you. We'll definitely do. Thank you very much for joining us in the Minsk studio. In the meantime, yeah, and we're all very excited to listen to your lecture. Good luck. All right. Thank you very much. So, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my session. My name is Oljan. I hope everyone is doing well and having a very productive time here at White Nights. Uh, I work at Ed Colony as a senior business development manager. Today, I'm going to talk about CPM pricing on user acquisition campaigns and the rise of it. I'm very excited to be your speaker in this session, and I hope it will, it will be a useful, productive one for you. Uh, I wished all the events would be offline, uh, like the old times, but hopefully starting with the second half of the year, the, the world will get back to fully normal so that we can have all these wonderful conferences offline and get to meet all of you wonderful people face to face. So, uh, Little bit about me. Uh, I have been working at, at Colony for almost two years. Uh, currently, I'm leading our growing business development team uh, responsible of uh, user acquisition partnerships. And I have also been working in mobile marketing space since 2015. Uh, as I told before, I live in Istanbul. Uh, it was a rough time during the pandemic with all the lockdowns and curfews. But uh, we have been getting back to normal, uh, step by step, being vaccinated, going out and all that good stuff nowadays. Uh, now, nowadays, with, the, with all the events, I have noticed that uh, like speakers are talking about what changed with them during the pandemic. And like, for example, what apps did they use mostly during these unprecedented times? And I think I'll continue that tradition uh, very fastly before jumping in, into my subject. Uh, you know, our daily lives changed a lot. Uh, we, we were all like stuck at home. And, and, and I, I would like to talk about it all day. And I can talk about it all day. But I want to talk about a very recent bizarre experience I, after the pandemic uh, that I faced. You know, I went to a nice restaurant a couple of weeks ago. And I, I noticed that I hadn't wore a formal trousers since early 2020. So I can say that it felt surprisingly horrible to, to wear one of those formal trousers again. Um, if I have to talk about like which mobile game I played a lot during the, the pandemic, well, it was uh, Tennis Clash. Uh, it's just a mobile online tennis game where you basically play tennis with people and improve your uh, character in terms of attributes and equipment uh, to face more competitive opponents. What I like about the game was how they implemented the, the rewarded video in it and also the general game mechanics to like improve your skills while, while you win games. And in terms of a non-gaming app, I can give uh, Binance as an example, which is a crypto exchange for buying and selling coins. I can say that I like this kind of uh, investment. Uh, I learned a lot about this uh, trade and even became mildly obsessed with it. At the very least, it helped me log in much, much uh, less, significantly less to, to social media because I mostly look at Binance at first when I hold my phone uh, these days. So... Uh, this is our, this is, this is the, these are the items that we are going to cover today. Uh, I'm going to talk about CPM a lot and I'll, I'll try to compare it with uh, CPI and tell you why CPM is advantageous. And yeah, so let's start with CPI, uh, cost per install. CPI model is just where advertisers pay for install. So this is just about getting the user to click on the install button 
on the App Store. App developers' traditional habits paved uh, the way for uh, CPI to become the most common and safe way to acquire users, since, since it's guaranteed to hit the inserted CPI goal, right? Uh, they necessarily pay for ads that only result in an install. So let's say you are willing to pay a dollar for an install in a certain geo or a specific publisher. When the install happens, you pay exactly that amount. It's a fixed price and this model is specific for mobile apps only. Uh, let's move to CPM. Uh, when we come to CPM, uh, let's, let's first talk about the etymology. Uh, the M of the CPM stands for mille. In Latin, it means 1,000. Uh, in ancient Rome, a mile was based on 1,000 double paces. Uh, it was mostly used in agricultural systems of measurements. And in the mobile marketing ecosystem, it has the similar logic. Uh, CPM is a bidding method in which the advertisers are charged for impressions. For every thousand impressions you serve, uh, you pay a certain amount of money and aim to measure if you will achieve your performance results. CPM is based is like mostly uh, commonly employed uh, method for pricing mobile advertising space nowadays and a very important metric for both advertisers and publishers since it determines uh, how much publishers will get paid for every thousand impressions. Uh, let's also compare eCPM with CPM because sometimes people mix that uh, with one another. Uh, eCPM means effective CPM and it defines how much an advertiser is willing to spend on 1000 impressions or in other words, it's more or less it indicates the, the, the buying power uh, of, their, of their campaigns within an ad network. The CPM formula is very, very simple. You basically multiply 1000 uh, with the cost of the campaign and divide by the number of impressions in any given time period. Uh, so, for example, you have a campaign and it, it's the daily cap and want to calculate your CPM at the end of the day. Uh, let's say you spend $500 and it received 10,000 impressions. So the CPM of the campaign on that given day is $50. So uh, let's continue and compare. Uh, so first of all, when we compare these two, please consider the, the fact that there's a, there's a risk uh, versus reward situation here. You know, nothing comes without a price. Uh, and there's a, there's a saying in, in English that there, there ain't no such thing as free lunch. So firstly, uh, campaigns on a CPI basis may take longer to time to, to ramp up because in a sophisticated DSP or an ad network that works with a, with a robust algorithm, uh, the optimizer will hold the campaign in the learning phase to gain more importance on, on, on performance. In addition to this, depending on the CPI goal, uh, the learning phase will flex. If the goal is too low, the optimizer will work more to hit uh, your goals uh, than it's high. So I suggest uh, usually starting high in the first place, it's always the better to work your way down to lower CPIs throughout the campaign compared, compared with increasing your CPI in the later stage of the campaign if it doesn't start scaling. Starting too low may also lead uh, to algorithm decreasing the daily impressions being served because it starts to favor other advertisers campaigns. So as a result, we can say that from a learning perspective, uh, CPI campaign seems less risky, but the learning phase is more conservative. CPM campaigns, on the other hand, uh, will burn a bit of budget, but it will potentially pledge a, a quicker scale. Uh, on the other hand, CPI campaigns may overspend and exceed budgets because actually there's, a, there's potentially a long distance between an ad request incoming to the marketplace uh, from the supply side where advertisers are waiting to bid and the install happening. For example, some installs might happen way after the ad request like ours because installs are attributed to, to a supply source after uh, the user actually opens the app uh, after the download. Uh, the ad server, on the other hand, only stops serving when the campaign hits the daily budget, but, you know, installs might keep coming in after that due to this fact. Uh, when it comes to, to the performance risk, uh, you know, CPI still feels safer, right? But when it comes to, to, to bid, bidding aggressively to increase your win rate in a real-time auction, 
uh, it is something relatively harder to do when transacting on a CPI. If it's CPI, we bid conservatively, so the, so the win rate is lower. And as an advertiser, you wouldn't be able to compete with uh, other advertisers bidding more aggressively. You know, algorithms know uh, who whales are. Uh, and by whales, by the way, I mean in-app purchase users or any high value user that your, that your uh, application needs. Uh, so algorithm, algorithms know who whales are within a network and you have to be bid, bid aggressively to find them uh, and CPI bidding just can't be that aggressive. Moreover, uh, it will allow data science models to take more exploratory risk on advertisers' behalf. So ad networks can go find users that can be potential, uh, potential value uh, outside the walled gardens, especially with the rise of advanced mediation on the publisher side. I'll talk about it uh, more in the coming slides. Uh, with the rise of it uh, for the last couple of years, we have to be much more aggressive on our bids. To, uh, this gives actually an ideal uh, ROAS optimizer more flexibility on adjusting CPM upwards and downwards so that any given CPI goal in order to get the target CPI fulfilled. Your campaign will be uh, delivered to optimize for a given target ROAS goal at the lowest cost by showing your ad to the audience in the network who are most likely to take action you choose, probably most probably in a purchase. Besides, uh, this methodology unlocks the, the fastest learning stage for, for user acquisition campaigns so that campaigns start to ramp up quicker and doesn't take uh, long to scale. Nevertheless, I'll repeat the everything comes with a price because you have to embrace the fact that early days may result in high eCPIs and you as a marketer might feel that users uh, you are acquiring are prohibitively expensive. So uh, when it comes to risk for, for CPI campaigns, like I told before, there's, there's actually zero risk. To the, to the advertiser, but uh, on the CPM side, advertisers and the network share the risk. There's no guarantee that there will be an abundance of installs. You just pay the media cost as an advertiser. To sum up, uh, it does not guarantee, as I told, any sort of install, user engagement or convergence, and you pay regardless of what the results are going to be. Uh, this is for sophisticated buyers. When you're transacting on a CPI, let's say you can typically get a user for, for $2 CPI. Uh, when paying on a CPM, that cost might be $10 for, for a thousand impressions. Let's say you are willing to pay $10 for a thousand impressions. And if you have a high converting creative even, and you can even acquire five users with that CPM bit. So, uh, and if the, if the IPM of the, of the campaign will be will be higher eventually, and you will pay two dollar each uh, for each of those users, and so it's going to be the same cost. Uh, let's continue. So let's come to the points uh, why CPM pricing is uh, is trending, and we will see see more adoption to CPM bidding. So first point, iOS fourteen. As you all might know, uh, the, the introduction of the app tracking transparency framework, the ATT by Apple last year, and the enforcement a couple of months ago was one of the industry's biggest changes in recent years. So the ATT means that apps must specifically request permission to access the device's IDFA uh, and just eliminating device IDs uh, used for user, uh, requires user consent for that, for sharing data. Current estimates show uh, the opt-in rate is low, which makes buying on CPI is increasingly harder due to, due to SK ad network. Very basically, SK ad network is the, is the tracking solution Apple has proposed to, to attribute impressions and clicks to the installs uh, in this new landscape. So scan or SK ad network doesn't tell us when the post pack happens for 24 hours. So, so we can't control pacing because Apple won't tell us if there is an install within 24 hours. For this reason, 
uh, marketers who do go for whale hunting uh, will struggle to navigate where, where they come from and like where these users come from and who these users are. So currently, uh, I think the best way to run scan campaigns is on a CPM basis tied uh, to a, a target CPI. Second point is uh, the rise of adv advanced mediation. In the early days of uh, user acquisition, media buying followed the traditional waterfall model. In this model, publisher sets priority to each ad network's SDK uh, they are integrated with. Uh, they, spe they specify price floors for a specific ad placement, depending on whether the placement is in tier one, uh, country or like the ad format of the placement. It can be interstitial, rewarded video, whatever. Uh, and in this model, uh, the winning bid is the one, usually the, the ones with high, pri high priority. Unlike waterfall, bidding, aka advanced mediation, follows uh, a simultaneous auction where publishers exhibit their inventory and several demand partners bid on that inventory at the same time. So highest bid wins. For the last couple of years, there has been a, a huge rise in advanced mediation model uh, monetization type. Uh, I can talk about it like advantages all day, like it's simplicity, transparency, more revenue opportunity, less latency issues, etc. Uh, but to sum up, bidding and advanced mediation creates a more fair and open and efficient ad ecosystem. So it's the, it's, it's, uh, so uh, as I told you before, this new auction model is becoming the new normal and industry standard. And we have to bid more aggressively. And the best way I think is doing CPM bidding with user acquisition campaigns. Third and last point is that I want to tell you that a couple of challenges user acquisition managers face these days, uh, updating bids on a large scale manually and finding bids uh, uh, finding and finding an efficient methodology to optimize towards ROAS. So dynamic CPM model uh, is, 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 a, is, a, is a programmatic metric by the way, uh, where CPM bid decreases or increases in real time based on the optimal value of the impression. So with dynamic pricing, uh, CPM pricing, we can focus on uh, performance goals and adjust campaigns based on the requirements. And it gives you flexibility to bid upwards and downwards to match the value of the user so we can win the auctions uh, more easily. So I also want to talk uh, a couple of minutes also about Ad Colony as well and how we built one of our product initiatives this year around CPM billing. So Ad Colony is one of the, one of the top independent uh, SDK ad networks in the mobile marketing ecosystem. Uh, we have more than 10 years of experience and we focus on full screen video ads. Uh, we have a very strong supply and it's SDK footprint with top chart apps. Uh, and we have a very successful brand programmatic and performance business. You can always see Ed Colony in the top 10 performers, performers in Apps Flyer performance index that they publish twice a year. So it's kind of a big deal for marketers to make decision uh, by just looking at the top 10 and say, okay, I'm gonna spend money with these sources. Uh, on the performance side, firstly, we built a new campaign management tool originally to make sure how we stay in line with Apple's campaign ID limitations. And that actually fundamentally changed how we manage campaigns and unlocked all the product initiatives we are working on and utilizing right now. And it enabled us with deeper targeting and optimization functions. Uh, yep. Uh, moreover, starting last year, our new data science team conducted a, a resurgence process to our algorithm and completely changed it to a brand, brand new one. We built our automated ROAS solution around CPM billing uh, tied to a target CPI and target ROAS for Android so that we can be as aggressive as possible to chase down high value users by looking at the data and the system actually calculates target ROAS, decide on the right bid for each user by flexing the bids upwards and downwards in an automated way to match the value of the user uh, to ensure the campaigns win the ad auctions. And last but not least, uh, machine learning is only as good as the data you feed it. So we need some specific inputs from our advertisers in order to deliver the, the, the output that our advertisers are looking for. That's why sharing all data feeds uh, is, is paramount 
so that our predictive models can work the way they were designed. So uh, this is in a nutshell how we built our robust and brand new model around CPM pricing. Uh, thank you very much for listening to me and I hope uh, you will have a great rest of the uh, White Nights events, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, John, it was great to listen to your presentation with all the comparison, giving your advice and what works best and where it's more risky, you know, but more profitable in terms like that. Uh, yeah, but like, what if I right now, while watching your presentation, decided that, okay, I really want to give it a go. So how, how shall we proceed with the, um, how, how, how does a company become your partner? What are the steps like? If I want to okay. become your partner, work with you guys, mm -hmm. uh, what should I know? Maybe, uh, I don't know, mm -hmm. a few basics that would help me to right. um, have better performance with you. Yep. So first of all, we, we understand, uh, understand your user acquisition efforts nowadays. And uh, we, we talk to you and understand your performance goals and understand how we can, you know, in a tailor-made way, can adjust our product portfolio into your needs in a data science pers perspective. And uh, we kindly also ask you to like uh, understand on what level uh, you as, as your company, uh, mm -hmm. as, a, as a marketer, you are willing to share data with us and uh, make, uh, make sure you understand uh, whatever you toggle on on your attribution provider, what is it gonna feed on our side? so that you can feel safe uh, on what, whatever data feed you share with us. We, I, I'm going to say, hey, hey, if you open this, if you toggle on this, this will happen. If you toggle this off, this won't happen. So we need this, et cetera. That kind of a transparent and sincere way, we, we, we do this kind of a communication, first of all. So we have to be fully aligned on mm -hmm. what you need and what we can bring to you uh, with, the, with, with the right setup. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Hope that was very uh, useful for you guys. Actually, in the chat, I see that a lot of people are saying thank you for your presentation. It was very informative. Uh, and in the meantime, dear audience, if you have more questions, please feel free to direct message by Dublin Hub. I'm sure you'll be happy to answer them afterwards, right? Of course, of course. Of course. Uh, everyone can feel free to add me on LinkedIn. I would love to listen every marketer and try to, try to support them as much as I can, as, as much as I have knowledge. Thank you very much for sharing your expertise with us. It was very interesting and hopefully see you sometime soon offline and you'll share even more. Have Thank a good you. day. Bye-bye. Thank you.